Lately, I've been wanting to make a set of cornhole boards. I've never made them before, and I'd like to have my very own set. I also want to make this cool rotating ladder ball game. This game is a ton of fun, and I figured while I'm at it, I'll tackle this one too. We'll need a way to keep score while we're playing, and a place to hold our drinks. Now the really cool part of this plan is that all these pieces can be disassembled and packed away inside the cornhole boards. Then the two halves can be latched together to make the whole thing super mobile and very convenient to store. At least that's the plan. Let's see if I can make it happen. I started by picking up some half inch thick project panels from my local home goods store. Some 1x8 pine boards and some dowel rods. Now in an effort to dress up these boards a little bit, I thought it would look really cool if I could trim each one of them out with some walnut. This way I can hide the edges of the plywood to conceal any voids that might be showing and just to generally make them fancier looking. So each of the panels got cut down just a bit to account for the thickness of the trim and then I could start to glue them on. Now I know there's a special kind of clamp specifically for putting on this kind of trim, but I don't have any of those. So instead, I opted for the thousand piece of blue tape method. Then as each piece dried, I could trim it flush and then glue on the next one. Eventually, I got both boards trimmed out and looking pretty good. Another tool I don't have is a six inch hole saw to make the hole in each of the boards. So to tackle this, I figured I'd break out my CNC table. I know I could get pretty darn close cutting it by hand, but when you have your own personal killer robot in your shop, why not put them to use, right? I threw down a piece of scrap and then very politely asked for a six inch circle. I had to sit and wait for like an entire minute, but finally it finished and I was able to release my newly formed template from the clutches of this machine. And since I made it to the exact same width as the cornhole boards, I could just plop it down, line up the corners, and trace out the circle in just the right spot. Then using my jigsaw, I could cut out the circle, staying just on the inside of the line. Now this left a pretty rough edge, so to clean it up, I used some painter's tape and CA glue to temporarily fasten the template back onto the board. Then with a flush trim bit and my router, I could make the circle a perfect match. And that finishes up the tops. Now for the frames. For those, I just cut down some 1x8 pine boards. This worked out perfectly because there was just enough width to use both sides with hardly any waste at all. I'd cut out my first piece and then just shave off a tiny little bit while trimming the other down to size two. And then I cut them all to length and I was ready to put them together. Now despite being a firm believer in overcomplicating everything, I just went ahead with some butt joints and brad nails for these frames. It's plenty strong enough and it makes assembly pretty darn easy. And it's even easier if you actually know how to set the depth adjustment on your nail gun. All right, so now I can squirt on some glue, pretend to spread it around with one of those little brushes, and then put it in the clamps. And remove them all once it had dried. Now I get to sand everything smooth. Don't you just hate it when YouTube content creators use very specific camera angles to do name placements so that they can try to influence you into researching and buying one of their affiliate products? You know, like they'll put a website address or a coupon code in the background that promotes a particular product that you didn't even know you wanted or needed. Well, rest assured, you certainly won't see any of that on this channel. No, sir. Not on this one. Next up was the legs. I printed off a stencil and I decided to make a template so that they'd all end up identical. I cut down a piece of MDF to size and then I stuck on the stencil with some craft adhesive. Then I took it over to the disc sander and 
I finished shaping it up to the line. I poked a tiny hole at the drill point, and then I was ready to make all the legs. First, the template gets traced onto each of the leg blanks. Then I cut the majority of the waste off over at the bandsaw. The template gets glued onto the blank, and then I can use the router to trace it. I'm very careful to go backwards just a bit on the ends so that I can eliminate any chance of tear out. And just like that, I have a leg. I drill out the mounting hole location, and then I can bolt it onto the frame. A couple of pieces of tape spaces it up just a touch for clearance, and then it's tightened on. Now I get to thoroughly impress all of you with my amazing geometry skills as I teach you how to draw a perfect pentagon inside of a circle. First, you need to get yourself a high performance compass like this one. Draw out your circle and then bisect the circle using a piece of stolen lumber. Then use a quality compass to make a series of marks around the edge of the circle. And don't be afraid to spend a lot of money on a good compass like I did. It really pays off in the long run. Next, stop what you're doing and go watch several YouTube videos on how to actually do this correctly and then come back a bit later and try again. Once I finally had it drawn out, I could use a smaller compass to add in some curves and circles on the corners. Then I cut it out with some scissors and I realized that I just spent about an hour making an oversized asterisk that I probably could have just printed off from the internet. I sprayed on a bunch of craft adhesive onto the back of it and then I fastened it down onto another plywood panel. Using the jigsaw again, I could roughly trace the shape and get most of it cut out. I stayed just on the outside of the line and I went around the entire shape until I eventually cut it free. Then over at the spindle sander, I could work my way through the remainder of the material and sand right up to the line. Now to make a second one. I certainly wasn't going to attempt to draw out another pentagon. So instead, I figured I'd just use the same trick I've already been using. I'll trace the shape, cut it free while staying outside the line, stick the two pieces together, and then use a flush trim bit in the router to make an exact copy. Next up, I needed to make a bunch of little plywood circles. I know I could have just had the CNC cut them out, but I wanted to show you that you can still make this entire project without a machine like that. Plus, I knew that if I had the robot make everything, that someone would inevitably comment on the video and say, wow, you're such a good woodworker. And then I'd reply, hey, thanks. And then they'd reply back and say, no, I was talking to the CNC. And then I'd cry myself to sleep. I cut down all the dowel rods to size, and then I could get started making the legs for the ladder ball game. Now since I'm a genius, I marked where to drill for the axle, and then I drilled them out over at the drill press like an amazing professional woodworker. And then while I was taking the corners off at the disc sander, it occurred to me that I totally drilled the wrong size hole in the previous step.
All right, now that the holes are the right size, I can glue in some bearings that I got that'll help the whole thing spin super smoothly. I just put some CA glue around the edges and then I dropped them in place on either side of the leg. At this point, I'm ready to start making the leg holders and fasten them into place inside one of the cornhole boards. I make sure the leg will fit snugly within and then I clamp it in place to dry. I put the second one together with some glue and some brad nails and then I clamp that one up as well. Once it had dried, I put the whole contraption together so that I could figure out exactly where it needed to be glued on. Using a framing square, I made sure everything was straight and centered before gluing it down. I drilled a couple holes in the main axle for some hitch pins and then I could add some color to each of the individual rungs. Now for the scoreboard. I started by purchasing some more stock and blue painter's tape and then completely masking off the entire face of the board. I put the piece on the CNC and I set the robot loose on carving out a bunch of numbers. And once it finished those, it poked a bunch of holes next to each one and then it was done. I filled in all the numbers with some black spray paint and then I could peel off the masking to see how it turned out. It's looking pretty fancy at this point. Man, a fancy scoreboard needs a fancy cup holder. I glued up several pieces of walnut and clamped it up to dry. Next I had to make the mortise that would attach the scoreboard to the bottom half that gets pushed into the ground. I glued up the pieces and I made sure that the bottom half would still fit inside it easily. Now since this section would no doubt experience a fair amount of torque, I wanted to reinforce the joints with some screws. At the drill press, I poked a bunch of holes and then I countersunk each one of the screw heads so that they would remain flush with the surface. With everything drilled out, I could pop in some screws and then glue it onto the bottom of the cup holder. The last bit was to attach the whole section onto the scoreboard itself. So I drilled, countersunk, and drove in some screws. To make the bottom half, I start by drilling a big hole into a stake and then screwing in a section of threaded rod. Once it bottomed out in the hole, I took it over to the disc sander so that I could add a little bit of a point onto the end. Now I don't need it to be super sharp, it just needs to be sharp enough so that it can easily be pushed into the ground, or into my neighbor's car tire. The next part was fun. I flexed my brain and I tried to come up with some clever ways where all the pieces could be packed away and securely held inside of each of the cornhole boards. It was fun making all these little pieces and gluing them into place. I ended up positioning them in a way where you could still play cornhole without any obstructions, but if you wanted to set up the ladder ball game, then the pieces could come out super easy. Now it was time for finish. And for that, I chose an exterior rated spar urethane to offer all the protection that I'll need. I brushed on multiple coats onto the majority of the pieces, but for the cornhole board tops, I chose to spray it on to get a perfect finish in the end. I popped on some heavy duty toggle latches at the corners. And mounted a handle. Then I was ready to pack it up. I drop each of the pieces down into their designated spots and I locked them into place. I made some little scorekeeping pegs from the leftover dowels and I dropped them into the scoreboard too. And then I could close the two cornhole boards up to one another. Just like that, 
And now I can just carry it around like a suitcase. All right, let's go try it out. First thing is to just open it up. Take the bags out. Remove the scoreboard and set that up. Deploy the legs and set up the first board. And then use a measuring string and set up the second board. And then game on. Hey, oh! oh. oh. All right, now let's try some ladder ball. I get the wheels and the dowels from under one of the boards. And then I set it all up using the legs and the other board. I line up each of the dowels, press it together, and then I put in the pins to lock it in place. And now it's ready to go. It's a fun game. Each color has a different point value from one to four, but the red one, that's a bad one. That's negative six points, so you definitely want to avoid that one if you can. Which, I can't. Oh, come on. You got negative three, so your positive two gets replaced with a red one. Okay. We, uh, we're pretty lousy at this game. And if you're good enough, or just super lucky, and you manage to land on the center gold dowel, well, that's worth positive six points. The fact that it can oh spin gosh. really adds a fun element to the game. It can be pretty challenging. Whoa! Gold! Nice. But the best part of all this is that everything can collapse down and pack away into a single piece that can easily be carried and stowed away until the next time you want to set it up. This was a fun project. If you'd like to try making it for yourself, I'll have detailed step-by-step -step plans available on my website over at fishersshoponline.com. Hey, if you feel I've earned it, leave the video a like, maybe a comment below, and consider subscribing to the channel. I've got a ton of other fun videos to watch, as well as plenty more to come in the future. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Ooh, come on, yeah! No, no, it's going crooked. Oh, jeez. That was close. This camera off so that we can show people your shot. <laughs> I don't know how many points that one's worth, but uh, he he did it.